So good afternoon, Julie. Good afternoon. Um, for the folks that don't know, um, Julie is a workers' compensation attorney here in Atlanta. Um, she works with um, a lot of my clients um, who love her and her services. She does a wonderful job. Um, but speaking of that, um, a lot of my clients um, do depend on workers' compensation. Um, they have cases that are kind of either starting or in the middle and they don't really know what's going on. So I thought it would be good, Julie, to kind of talk with you today about workers' comp and with the coronavirus, how is that affecting your cases and, and, and clients' ability to collect? Yes, no, and thank you for having me. My clients adore you for bankruptcy issues, so <laughs> I had to say that. Thank you. Um, it is, it, it's a hard time for everybody and it's very uncertain. Under the Workers' Comp Act, this is all uncharted territory. So each day, it's a revolving door, an evolving process where when you know something else comes down, the impact on our work, injured workers is the first thing we think of. But just to go back a little bit so that for the injured workers to get an idea of what we're doing to protect them from the attorney's level up to the state, to the government, and all of that. When the government came down on March the 14th, the Supreme Court of Georgia put a stay on all the proceedings okay. through, um, I believe, April 14th. Okay. April 13th or 14th. And so the full board, the state board of workers' compensation, had to decide, because they're self-regulated, do they want to adopt that? So they adopted it in the sense that it put a stay on the court proceedings, it put a stay on the filing deadlines and discovery deadlines, things like that. But what our board did that I'm really proud of them and thankful is they carved out some exceptions, realizing that we've got injured workers that we really need to safeguard and protect here. Okay. So they said, yes, we're putting a stay. However, we're not putting a stay on the insurance employer, their requirement to keep paying your clients weekly checks called indemnity checks. Those continue, that requirement continues, okay. and this does not stay that. Okay. Also, authorized medical treatment. Authorized meaning your person is already under that compact. They have been established that they were injured on the job, and they're receiving medical treatment by an authorized treating physician. The employer insurers can't just stop that, install okay. that. So that they were very treatment. Clear. Yes, their okay. treatment will continue. Okay. However, we can get to that in a second. The treatment is tricky right now. Um, but the other thing they did is they gave us a few things that I think it makes our system exceptional in the workers' comp world. Our judges have something called a PMT process, which stands for Petition for Medical Treatment. So back in the old days, before this petition for medical treatment, let's say somebody um, somebody falls, I have a client that fell off a crane, head to toe, fractures, horrible injuries, and needed MRIs done. The insurance company just stalled and would not approve it. And so back in the old day, we'd file for a hearing, 30 days, then another 30 days to get discovery. It would take us a while. The PMT gives them five days to accept and approve the MRI or deny it. And if they do neither, then they can go in front of a judge and they have to tell the judge why. If they do neither, it's automatically approved. And then we get on the phone in five days with the judge and we can talk to the judge and the judge can issue a true order to get the medical treatment approved. So whenever I heard this day, the first thing in my mind, I actually reached out to our chief judge, which I, I'm not normally one of those people, but to advocate <laughs> for my clients, right. I thought, I know what's going to happen. These insurance companies aren't going to approve anything. They're taking away our PMT right. Well, they carved that out. That's still there. We're still doing those daily right now. That's great. They also said we are doing conference calls. So not only conference calls, but emergency conference calls in any situation, our, our judges are available to us. And I'm doing them this week and last week constantly. They've been amazing. And they will get on the phone and try to expedite to help our injured workers resolve what we can without the hearings. Now, I think we were talking beforehand, you said bankruptcy court has the remote hearings going forward. Yeah. So, um, you know, same thing. I mean, I think that our trustees and our judges, they have been amazing. They've stepped, I mean, they, they, they've just taking care of everything every step of the way. So even though our initial 341 hearings have been all reset out a month, so after April 14th, they'll start. Um, the normal hearings on, you know, stay lifts, confirmation matters, motions, they have, they're all continuing um, telephonically. Um, so that's been wonderful. So, I mean, cause life goes on just because of this doesn't mean that, you know, folks don't have issues come up. So same with our bench, they've been amazing. They've really just, stepped up and so at least we're, we're able to, to keep keep our clients protected during this process. 
which is great. And so that was what I was getting to the remote um, telephonic hearings we, we don't have in Georgia. I actually spoke to a judge this uh, today on the case and he was asking, you know, is it free, is Zoom free, that they, they aren't set up, set yeah. up to have these hearings. So I don't think that our hearings, workers' comp hearings, we won't reach that level. Hopefully by when they're resetting them right now in right. mid-April and May, right. we'll be moving right. forward. But other states, I was looking at some of the other states, like um, Connecticut is one of the states that they are doing it remotely as well. There's also, for our injured workers in Georgia, when you get fired, if you're under restrictions, you've got to prove a job search, which again requires a hearing to get your benefits. Connecticut waived that. They said, right now, if you're fired and you're under restrictions, we're waiving the job search. Obviously, no one's going to hire you. Right, right, right. And so they've done that. New York, with them being the epicenter, we talked about it a little bit. Michigan, I think, is the only state that has this presumption for our first uh, responders that if they acquire COVID-19, which we can talk about that big question in a minute. Yeah, yeah. In Georgia. But um, they get this, they get automatic protection and they just have to prove they tested positive. The employer sent them home and either through a laboratory test or through a physician. And so now many of these states are petitioning their governor to get this presumption in place for their first offenders, uh, for the first responders. But they, um, Georgia has not adopted that yet. Okay. So that is a discussion we could talk about for, for hours. Is Georgia <laughs> going to consider that? Yeah. Um, what, what I'm hearing and what, what the two issues are is one, my hope during all of this, and I, I've seen it with our defense and opposing counsel, is everyone kind of comes together. We're all in the same boat right yeah. now. And let's help people. Georgia is very strict on, um, in fact, it was a case that I think I had with you, a pneumoconiosis case, which is um, occupational disease, Mr. Fernandez. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so occupational disease in Georgia is a little bit more stringent requirements to get it covered under the Workers' Compensation Act. You have to show that you were exposed to something that you would otherwise not have not been sure. exposed to yeah. ordinarily. Right there, COVID-19. I mean, who's to say where, where because of the the incubancy of two to 14 days, how do you pinpoint it to right. the job? So I think it gives defense counsel maybe even a legitimate argument, but definitely a, an argument that we can't get it covered when these injured workers come to us. I, 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 would, I would take that case any day and argue that it is covered. It's first impression, it's unprecedented you know, for yeah. Georgia. And so what the judges would do, we all were talking about it amongst my colleagues until now when you have the, this tr tr um, $3 trillion relief package, that may help our injured workers more than workers comp caps out at 675 a week. So if they can, if they're out of work because they obtain it through the job, it might even be better for them, I don't know, to go and get their unemployment plus $600 a week, you know, monetarily wise. And then the medical side is something that I think will come up and it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds in Georgia, um, if it is indeed covered or not. But um, the occupational disease side is hard and then the causation side is hard. But then we've had things come up medically. So in, in Georgia, say, say that you, you injure your back and you have back surgery. And then when you're trying to get up, your leg goes out, which is part of your back injury. Right. And you fall and you break your elbow. That's called a super added injury. And so any treatment flowing from that injury is covered. Okay. Well, I had an attorney say the other day, let's say hypothetically that our worker is getting treatment and they, they test negative for COVID-19. Then the employer can force our workers to go to a doctor, and they either do that for one of two reasons. Either they want them to go back to the authorized doctor quickly because they want their benefits cut off and they want a regular duty work release, which we obviously don't want. Right. Or they want to send them for an IME for an independent medical exam to say that somehow this is not related any longer, or this person can work, or this person's faking it. But under Georgia, if you don't go to that appointment in general, they can file their own PMT and oh. suspend our client's benefits. So during this process, one question came up is if our clients don't want to go to the doctors. Right, because right of course. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. You know, can they file the PMT? And um, I've had at least one judge where on a case, they tried to force my client to physical therapy and she would not go. And the judge said, absolutely not. You know, you can't do that. 
But if they do go to the doctor and they test negative for COVID-19 before, and then they are forced by these employers to go and they test positive, is that a super added injury? Right, you right. Know, that, that, that could potentially come up so it's a good it's a good point point. and i know that you know obviously COVID 19 this is still new you know every day it seems like the news changes but i've been seeing things that um you know even the people that it that it's just a mild you know mild symptoms they'll still have lung damage i mean you know we don't know really how yeah. that is going to affect people the and implications I, are yeah. profound medically yeah. possibly we don't yeah. know we don't know so it makes it it makes it a big it makes it a very big issue and then the other issue medically that we've seen coming up is my clients that we've fought and fought and, and get them in for surgery get it approved and right now you know resurgence a lot of the big orthopedists are not doing non-essential or non-emergency yeah. surgery so you're having these delays in treatment that really does impact someone that has a severe need for neck surgery, back surgery. I've got a total hip replacement waiting right now. And um, it makes it really difficult. And then the other medical issue that is, is brought up on a case of mine recently, when they get injured on the job, the employers have to have what's called a panel of doctors. Okay. And we're bound to send them to the panel. And if we don't, that's unauthorized and they do not have to pay. Well, so in a, a case I had, we did not like the doctor on the panel and we have a right to one time change. We went to change to a doctor that's not seeing any patients until May. So my client can't sit from here until May without treatment. Right. So we found a physician to send the client to, and that's going to be something we'll fight for that this interim physician should be authorized because they still need medical care. So it, it brings up a lot of different things. So Julie, do you have like, um, you know, I've had a couple of people call in um, and we're going to be doing bankruptcy for them, but they, they're like, you know, and I, I got hurt on my job and I might have workers comp. What Do you have any tips for somebody that, that has just been injured on the job? Like kind of what to expect right now or? Yes. I mean, they are the ones that, that are critical that they call somebody and call an attorney so we can get their a, a hearing filed for them because right now we're delayed until April 14th for our hearings, which means all the hearings that were on the calendar from March until April are gonna be pushed into April and May. And so if these injured workers wait any longer than a moment's notice today, it, it could be pushed to the end of the year. It could be pushed until next year. So the quicker they call somebody and we can get them on a calendar, the quicker everything is gonna go for them. And from the hearing, just like all of us, the, the hearing is where all your power is, right? To force an employer who's reluctant to do what they need to do right. forward. Well, the stays at first, what we were, I was worried that the opposing counsel or the in, employer would just sit on it. They wouldn't perform depositions. They wouldn't perform discovery. So really everything would be pushed out six months. But if they will call and go ahead and get an attorney to start the filings, these attorneys have been amazing on the other side. I am now doing remote depositions. We've even figured out that through these remote depositions, these court reporters, if they're certified, they can remotely swear a witness in, oh, wow. which is an issue that comes up. Um, the attorneys also are going ahead with discovery where we're doing remote notarizations for when you have to notarize the interrogatories. They're allowing us to do that now. And they're really working their cases as if a hearing is coming up in six weeks, knowing it probably would be 12 weeks. But the beauty in that is that I'm resolving some cases without a hearing, holding their feet to the fire, because um, I even have one now that my client was um, an electrician while they were filming a movie here. And he fell and fractured his foot in three places. He's supposed to be going back to the doctor and they keep wanting to push him back, hoping the doctor will release him to reduce the value. Well, the doctor um, won't see him and he's not comfortable going. And instead of waiting for the hearing to come back around on our issues, the defense attorney called me and said, hey, you know what? We understand why he's not going back. And they made an offer on this case and we're probably going to resolve it next oh, that's week. Great. That's great. So if these, these injured workers will go ahead and call and, and it's not okay. at a standstill. Yes. Okay. And, and the State Board of Workers' Compensation, even on their site, they're saying we're still operating, you know, business as usual as much as we can, but they're here to help these issues so we don't have to wait for the court hearings. We can file motions and do other things to help them out right now. Okay. Well, that's great. I mean, Julie, I, and, I, and I appreciate you sharing all this um, with me. 
because like I said, you know, we get a ton of <laughs> a ton of calls from folks that will either be sending over to you um, or already in the process. Um, so a lot of workers comp questions. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time because I know you have two two boys at home and all that good stuff. <laughs> Yes, no, I, I love to. And I know I love what I do. I'm like the nerd that loves what she does. I know, I know that. And it comes by, it, it comes out in everything. And I will never forget the client who, who, um, who uh, compared you to the, the fighting, the, like, a, you're very, you're very cute and little, but you're like a fighting rooster. <laughs> yes, yes. One other thing I wanted to add for your clients that also the um, job search. So they have to make a job search right now. Yeah. And if they get injured on the job and they're fired or something and they're thinking of what to do. Um, but they also have, a, when they're, it, after they get injured, the employers can offer them work and they have to go. That's another one the judges have been amazing on. Who wants to go in this environment? In this environment. Right. And so they use it to suspend their benefits. But um, one of the judges, it wasn't on my case, just shut that down immediately and said, nope, that's a justified refusal. So I feel like if these people will call now, I've never seen the judges acting so helpful as they are now to that's everybody. Right. That's, that's, that's nice to hear. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Good stories from the legal community because we get, we get uh, put down on <laughs> all the time. <laughs> no, but you know, all joking aside, even in, in bankruptcy land, um, you know, the creditor attorneys that we deal with, because we're a small bar too, um, the creditor attorneys we deal with, they've been amazing too. I mean, we've everybody's been working together um, and trying to get things resolved. And, and it's, been, it's been very nice. I mean, very, very positive, I have to say, at least in terms of our bankruptcy bar. And it sounds like the workers' comp bar is, is the same. Yes, and it's and this is such tough times, but I feel personally that out of tough times always is some opportunity and something good, yes. and maybe this is something good. It's kind of uniting people in a way that we would not otherwise. I agree 200%. Well, Julie, one other thing, I'm oh, sorry, no, you keep no, saying no, one no, other go thing. Ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but one other thing that I can also help even your bankruptcy people with, but also the injured workers daily, I'm getting information about helping them. I mean, maybe it's also through the Relief Act, but that's like a, who's going to read through all that, yeah. right, or understand it. Right. But people that can't pay their rent, people that can't pay their mortgage, people that can't pay their cell phone, there's, there's the procedures in place that I can help them with that has them right now temporarily let them continue to use their cell phone, the electric bills, all things that our clients deal with because yeah. they're usually paycheck to paycheck. Yes. Those are things that are, um, I'm amazed at how quickly they're, they're finding ways to give relief for those kinds of issues that I think are going to start coming up often. Yeah, and, and we, we even, we've now got up on our website um, a, a list of resources. I mean, even credit card companies are helping. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know they, the evil credit card. Yeah, so everybody is coming together, and that is, that's very nice to see. Um, but yeah, I really do appreciate you sharing that with us today. And um, if anybody has any questions about anything related to workers' comp, they need to call Julie. Um, and I'm going awesome. to- The fighting that. rooster. <laughs> <laughs> She did say you were very cute and very nice, oh, but, but when you lovely. went to trial, you were a fighting rooster, and that will <laughs> in my head. Well, <laughs> thanks so much, and I'll um, I'll put your information um, in the video below, so if anybody has questions, they can just go straight to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Great to see you, as always. <laughs> Same here. Bye. <laughs>